This is the Becoming Muslim Podcast at UntoIslam.com, the show that helps people convert to Islam with hosts from the US, UK, and Australia. Yeah, never touch a woman and better treat her well if you plan on going to heaven, because that's the first thing people ask me. Now you belong to a religion that believes in beating women. And I thought, well, you know, I used to be a minister at the church. Like, and a lot of that goes on in the church is nobody says nothing. Handle one devil when God's supposed to be so tough. Mm -hmm. And if God is the first and the last, how can he be the first and the last if he's three? Again, not making fun of anything Christianity, but when you really understand who you're praying to, you know? You know, like if we understand who we're, 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 talk, we're talking to, the God, not yes, a God. Yes, the God. The God. God. And is there anywhere in the Bible where Jesus specifically says to worship him? Which is a good point. And the, it's a good point. They've all been they've all been altered. And, and when I was younger, even as a Christian, that was one of my questions. Like, I never really asked it. But it made me wonder, like, well, it says here you're not supposed to alter the word of God, and yet it has been altered all over the place. So what does that mean about what we have? Yeah. You know, and why was it altered? Yeah. Because people don't do things, you know, there's no behavior without a purpose. So why was it altered? Try it and take the time to listen and to the voices in your head. Because you know, I mean, you don't have to have a PhD or some kind of special training. You know what is, is God's telling you. I mean, common sense. But I guarantee you, if you uh, try it and you want your money back, uh, we'll give you your money back 100%. <laughs> 100% guarantee money back yeah. return. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum or shukran. Mm-hmm. Why you love the Arabic Quran better than the English? And I thought, but then I thought, man, this don't make any sense. But I really do. Like, Boss Hanna Watala showed me. He said, because you don't understand it with your your mind, but you understand it with your soul. A boasting or, or anything, but sometimes sure, sure. I love my mind probably look black, like the ring around my screen, you know. Mm-hmm. I say, oh, Allah, help me with these, you know, move mm-hmm. these black spots. Yes, yes. So, but all Allah fine. has to do is just think of something, and mm-hmm. it's done. You sure, don't have sure. to get in the water. You don't have to uh, have a, a, a minister say, okay, you want to join this church, sign this card. Yeah, we don't need that inner, that, no. that middleman. There's no middleman yeah. between us and God. All along, I was destined to be a Muslim. I, I believe mm-hmm. you were destined to be a Muslim. Yes. There's something yes. in you that you didn't see, that your family didn't see. There's something in you that the, the Muslim people didn't see. Mm-hmm. There's something in you, Allah seen was special. And he, he knew the, the day you were born that you were going to be a Muslim. Like religion isn't just part of your life. I'm... Easter Sunday or Christmas mm-hmm. Or, mm-hmm. or on Sunday from 10 to 12 but it's, it's every it's it becomes a part of it is your life mm-hmm. try it and you know and, the, and it's like I tell people you if once you become a Muslim it's not like you you don't want to go back mm-hmm. the only thing I regret about it I thought man I, oh Allah I wish I would have been like this my whole life yeah i feel like there was no pressure with with me either i had and and dear listeners this is important for you too you you go out and you read the quran and you read about islam and you learn about islam so that when you are ready to take that shahada you know that you really believe and you know that you're doing it with a clear sound mind with a steadfast heart because a lot of times in 
growing up in Christianity, it was you have to just believe. You have to take that leap of faith without the evidence. But in Islam, what I love is we can look at that evidence and we can be led by logic. So welcome, dear listener. We are here with Dr. Michael Jewett. Dr. Jewett was a Christian minister for over 30 years. He has a PhD in theology. He held many positions in his church. And alhamdulillah, Allah allowed him to become Muslim. So his passions include sharing Islam with new reverts. He's also worked with the needy and homeless and those who are alcoholics and who deal with substance abuse for 30 years. He was formerly the state of Michigan director of an alcohol and substance abuse program. And he trained churches around Michigan to work with alcohol and substance abuse clients. He was also a chaplain for state of Michigan for the prison ministry and jail ministry and juvenile ministries. And he said uh, he actually, how many people did you bring to Christ? Like over 3000 is what you were saying. Yes, uh, I guess you could say Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Maybe think of it as bringing them closer to God. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Closer to God. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Because, you know, there is there is that, that bringing them closer yeah. to God. So not everyone knows about Islam. Yeah. So, you know, you just kind of take those steps closer to God. They say if you take a step toward God, he'll like run to you. So, yes. Alhamdulillah. So... My first question, and probably the question on everyone's mind after hearing how long you were in Christian ministry and all the work that you did, why did you choose, or why did you become Muslim? What led you to Islam? Uh, well, it might sound kind of strange, but it, it all started with a rummage sale. <laughs> really? I have to do yeah. a rummage sale, really? And uh, this sister in our neighborhood came to our rummage sale and uh i had to take her some items that she bought she could get in her car so i took them over to her home and when i did she's i kept knocking on the door hit the doorbell and then mm -hmm, mm -hmm. finally uh later on she came back over and she said uh i'm sorry i was there but i was praying ah alhamdulillah mm -hmm. she said um, the Muslims, when we're uh, praying, we don't answer the door, or answer the phone, or I thought, mm -hmm. it's true. Oh, wow, you don't. Being a Christian, if you can, sometimes that's a good thing because you don't have to pray; you get out of it. You know, like almost like a prison sentence. You know, mm -hmm. think about mm -hmm. it. and I don't know something as I begin to reflect. You know, before the podcast, I thought, you know, that was the start of it. I realized I thought this, this lady, mm -hmm. you know, with that. Thing on her head that we used to make fun of and sure, uh, sure. Islamic names and all that, but I said, there's something different about her. She has mm -hmm. something I don't have, and mm. I don't know what it is. So I didn't just right then and there tell her well, I want to do the shahada, but it was over actually many years, you know, mm -hmm. of, of studying and 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 meeting people uh, of the Islamic faith, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, the more I began to study and, and, and see, uh, I realized, you know, God has more for you. Like mm -hmm. we go back to digress about the Christianity. Sure. You know, if somebody said, I repented and gave my life to God. I say, Alhamdulillah, that means that's a start. You know, it's better. Yeah, than, yeah, Alhamdulillah, yes. You know, I, I just became a devil worshiper and I smoked crack or something, you know. Yeah, no way. Yes. Well, a, Alhamdulillah, you know, at least they're on the right path, you know. Yes, yes. So it, uh, but I realized this lady has something that I don't have, and I don't know mm -hmm. what it is mm -hmm. because I, I never really fit in the church as a Christian. Sure, sure. Because the church people, they a lot of them don't want to read the Bible, and I was surprised that people been in church for since childhood don't know some of the basic things, you know. Mm, that is a surprise. Yeah, and sometimes you know and. Well, we don't have time to do things for, for God. You know, I'm busy, you know, and I thought, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, I thought, that, that's strange, you know, but. Sure. But uh, I kind of never really fit in. But I think I put it on my, my notes there that they used to kind of mock me in, in a nice way, you know. Sure, yeah. Call me Mr. Uh, by the help of the Lord. Mr. by the help of the Lord. 
Yeah. Every time I said something like, uh, I'd always say, uh, by the help of the Lord, mm-hmm. by the help of the Lord, I'll do this, or by the help of the Lord, I'll be, do the podcast. And I sure. realized that was like saying, inshallah. That is, I was to say, that is exactly yeah. like saying, inshallah, yeah. by the help of the Lord. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So I, and then uh, one day after studying and studying, uh, I was one of my friends, and and I, uh, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed me to do the shahada prayer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's where my journey began. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So, were there any hard parts for you in this journey? Was it hard for you to convert to Islam? Yeah, you know, uh, we're all afraid what everybody's going to think, you know. Mm-hmm. And one of the best things you can do in life, you know, who cares what anybody thinks about you? Sure, sure. Like my little boy the other day, he said, he kept saying, uh, Dad, why are they staring at me? Mm-hmm. What's, what's wrong? They don't sure. like my son. Don't worry what people think about you. Some people mm-hmm. love you. Some people hate you. you know, but that's mm-hmm. you become a new Muslim, and you're uh, in your mind. You, now you belong to the terrorist. You know, mm. yeah, that's sure. What people were talking about, and and especially after being in the church all those years. Sure, of course. You know, and and uh, uh, inshallah, I love to say. Well, you know, I said the shahada. I became. Uh, I learned the Quran overnight. Yeah, yeah, sure. I prayed uh, five times a day, and I never made it that. But uh, I'd be lying, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> and, you know, like a ski slope up and down, up and down. Sure, and sure. And, they say that that's normal. You know, yeah. th- sometimes they call it iman. You know, which I'm still learning. But sometimes your iman is high, and sometimes it's low. Yeah. And, you know, like we have days like. I have mornings when I wake up uh, and I'm like, I'm going to recite Quran with my sisters at five 30 in the morning. And I'm all excited and ready to go. And there's some days I just like want to stay in bed. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a, the Islam that to Jenna is a, I was telling somebody the other day, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yes. Yes. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And I think it's also partly about the journey. Yeah. As well. So if you're mm-hmm. going to, you know, you have your good days. I said some, we all have the taste of death in our life, some through mm-hmm. poverty and some through riches. So it's, it's a, it's sure, a, it's sure. a process. But you know, if, if there's any new Muslims or uh, people thinking of reverting, I would listen to them. Mm-hmm. I would say, don't worry what people think. Mm-hmm. And we hear a lot, and it took me a long time to learn this too. We, we talk about like a fear of God. Sure, sure. And I was talking about someone with that this weekend. Yeah. I mean, you think like uh, the fear of God is like, you know, like a spooky fear. Yeah. You know, God's ready to strike you down if you even think the wrong thought, you know, or, or a Yeah, look sure. Wrong. And that's very Old Testament, you know. Yeah. Very but Old you Testament. Know, a lot of the young people think that, you know, because that's how they were brought up. A lot mm-hmm. of the Muslims of the family. Mm-hmm. But uh, Alhamdulillah, I told the person, I said, you almost have to fight Allah to go to hell. Sure. Yeah. I mean, he'll forgive you and forgive you and forgive you uh, repeatedly. And, and also it it comes with, you know, and our listeners can really think about this themselves is what is your opinion of God? You know, what is your opinion of source? Because I think that plays a lot into it. If you think, you know, they're going to just punish me. Subhanallah, you know, they're going to, you know, send me to the hellfire, then this is what your opinion is of source, rather than yeah. remembering the mercy that is offered to us in the Quran. And sometimes it's really hard for us to have that positive sort of growth mindset, so to speak, yes. if that makes sense. Yeah, and the concept yeah. of fear, you know, not the spooky fear, but a deeper a reverence. Yes, yes, a reverence, but but a, yeah, but a fear of what he can do. Yes, but not to think he's ready to strike you down. You know. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Not... They, sometimes they look at maybe like a, a new a Muslim, a person thinking of reverting. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody like you and say, especially the ladies. That's where it's really hard. Other ladies, I yeah. can't wear this thing in my head, and uh, you know, I always or or. Uh, I can't do this or I can't do that. You know, the some 100 I can't. Aram, it's a haram. Yeah, but don't worry about that. Just give your Allah your best. 
You don't start off and expect you to be perfect overnight. Mm -hmm. And sometimes too, people in uh, this, like the psychology part of me being a uh, Christian psychologist, sometimes they compare uh, Los Hannibal Talent to their earthly father. Mm -hmm. So their earthly father was mean or uh, abusive. Well, that's how Allah yells, or sometimes they know the other way. If Allah let them, their father let them do anything, you know, well, that's how Allah is. But it's not. He's mm -hmm. He, mm -hmm. If he can be compared to anything in, to earth, he wouldn't be Allah. Yes, yes, he's not. He's not comparable no. to anything, alhamdulillah, which is so different than the Christian theology, yeah. from my understanding. There is almost like some human characteristics in the, that yeah. theology that we do not have in Islam because we're like, no, we don't know God. God is not like us or anything that he created. Yeah. So, yeah. And I find that, that a very interesting difference. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Like I say, it's like, if you could say, well, you know, God, just like, uh, just like my, he's as smart as my iPhone. Well, he wouldn't be God. <laughs> no. Yeah. You know, anything you compare him to, you know, mm -hmm. but if you really, like I say, my I'd love to say I I haven't sinned. I prayed and I do the perfect sajut and I fast the extra days, you know. But I'd have to get off the podcast and go do a lot of uh, repenting for the lot. <laughs> I can't say I do all those things. I mean, I did fast and I I try to bit by yeah. bit, you know, and work my way towards doing more and more ibada, more worship. But like you said, you know. You take it a little bit at a time. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll drown in it. So, yeah, you will. Even the, and the, like I said, I don't know the Arabic word, but I even lost handle what Dallas said. Uh, I, I believe it was Prophet Muhammad said that he said, don't don't involve yourself too much, even. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, put like put so much time. Well, I got to read the Quran, I got to finish it in two days. You'll put too much yourself. But the main thing is that people, uh, inshallah, just take your time. Mm -hmm. You know, like I say, don't look at you and say, you know, especially a lady that's not dressed properly. Like I said, I'm not making fun of her. Sure, anything. sure, yeah. I could never do that. You know, and maybe you thought that too when you first, I, I'm going to listen to your uh, podcast. I've been busy this week. No, you know, no worries. No worries. I, I did not I wear a hijab for the first yeah. week, but mostly because I was given the wrong information. I had a good yeah. close friend who was Muslim growing um, in college. Yeah. Say, I had a close friend who was Muslim in college and she wore hijab and I went to her family's house for Eid and I, and no one else was wearing hijab. So I said to her mom, how come no one else is wearing hijab? Why only is uh, Ken Hindi, her daughter? And she goes, oh, she's just really religious. You don't have to wear a hijab to be Muslim. So when I became Muslim, I didn't realize that that was something that God wanted me to do yeah. because someone who was born Muslim had given me the wrong information. Yeah. So I finally said to my friend who had given me like a ton of scarves, am I supposed to wear these? <laughs> yeah. So, then she's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. yeah you you just... Imagine yourself, you know, like, you know, several years ago myself, or I imagine you as well, mm -hmm. you wouldn't think I'd be getting up at uh, 4, 30, 5 o'clock and praying. I used to say that all the time, you know, after a revival meeting. Sure, yeah. Full of I'm going to start getting up at daylight and uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to start praying. I'm going to start mm -hmm. reading my Bible more. But even though I was involved in uh, all those ministries and running around the state. Sure, sure. But I'd wake up and I'd say, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. Yes, yes. That's easy I'll to say. Tomorrow. But Los Hanabatel, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, a million times. Yes. I'd wake up in the morning and, 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 and you know, sometimes the Los Hanabatel, Inshallah, I wake you up even before the Fajr. Yeah, yeah, you wake yeah. up right before. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's a beautiful a, thing. Everything is, but finally one day I just told Allah, I said, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, I don't care what anybody says. Mm -hmm. I don't care if my family don't want nothing to do with me, if my friends don't want nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. I don't, if everything is lost to me. Mm -hmm. I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, I'm going to follow you. I'm not going to be ashamed to worry about what people think. Sure, sure. That's true. And that reminds me of that Bible verse. There's a verse that says something along the lines, you know, what is, 
what's what it what does it matter if you like profit the whole world if you lose your soul something along those lines yeah if you gain the whole world lose your soul what's it profit you yeah what's the profit yeah so alhamdulillah it's a good good bible word, huh? <laughs> i read the whole bible when i was 10 years old except deuteronomy i could not oh, do that yeah. it's so boring uh, subhanallah. yeah <laughs> So and so we got that. So and so we got that. Yeah, yeah, and all the rules and so on and so forth. And for our Christian brothers and sisters too, maybe they they found this true about the uh, about maybe they tried reading the Quran. Mm -hmm. And that's where I used to have a problem because in the Bible everything's in order. Sure. But in the Quran, uh, you know, you may be talking about Adam and Eve one minute, and next thing you're here talking about the the resurrection. Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, it does. Mm -hmm. Give it in sections. Uh, mm -hmm. so kind of have it, yes. But it has a pattern to it that's very unique. Yes. Alhamdulillah. And so. it, it, one, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's hard to put it down once you start reading it, you know. It's so true. I think uh, I spent, when I finally was able to pick it up, I read it in a week and a day. I was just reading it constantly. <laughs> yeah. It, Any, every free moment. I had it on my phone, so it was really easy just to read it in English, you know, wherever I was. So, I and you know, that. one thing I found out too that if don't worry, you know, let people know you're a Muslim. You don't have to go uh, put it up, paint it on your car. So, don't be afraid what people think about you. It's true. It's true. And really, the one thing that I learned, you know, when you talk about being afraid of what other people are thinking, is I realized at one point that I really wasn't afraid of what other people were thinking, that I was making up in my own head what I thought other people were thinking. Oh, yes, yeah. that's very And good. the reality was, this wasn't what they were thinking, that those thoughts were really my thoughts. Mm -hmm. And if I realized, when I realized that, I realized, well, if I can make up a story about what I think other people are thinking, and it's really just my story that I'm making up, then I can make up a better story. Yeah. I can make up a more supportive yeah. narrative. So mm -hmm. I could pretend that, yeah, that they're very supportive of me being Muslim and they're supportive of the diversity and that they appreciate, you know, who I am, you know, something along those lines. Yeah, that's very sense. good. Yeah, that's excellent. So, and, yeah. and like you said earlier, you know, you have to be careful when, when you first come to Islam that, you know, oh, that's a religion that beats the women. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My oh, that's women like that. believes in uh, mm -hmm. uh, blowing up places, you know, so you, mm -hmm. and if, People say that stuff. You say, well, no, that's not true, but I don't know what the answer is, but I'll find out. Sure, and I'll let sure. You know. And you will be I asked. People read the Quran. If you read the Quran through, mm -hmm. you don't like it, you can sure. keep it or throw it away. It's up to you. <laughs> but at least, you know, I'm not going to try to give you a talk today mm -hmm. on speech therapy. Sure, yeah. I probably couldn't even spell speech therapy. <laughs> <laughs> S P I R. No, I'm just kidding. No, but, uh, don't worry about it. I'm a terrible but, speller. <laughs> no, I, but what I'm just saying, I, I. So how how would I know? I'd have to go at least read some books or study and say, well, you know, sister, uh, to, to know a little bit about speech therapy. Well, you don't sure. talk about the Quran if you've never read it. Just something you heard on Fox News or uh, sure, what the sure, told, or something on the Donald Trump website. Secondhand. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah, secondhand. You want to, and uh, nothing bad about any of these people. You know, we say we, and, uh, but read it for yourself. But if you don't like it, sure. Uh, then, then ignore it. And, and I tell, uh, also, I don't want to tell, inshallah, I tell people, you know, Islam is the only religion where you have to believe in the Bible and the Torah mm -hmm. and all the prophets. Yes. You'll never find a Jewish person. Mm hmm. If you went to Jerusalem, there to the Wailing Wall, sure. And say, you, you know, do you have to believe in the Bible and the Quran mm -hmm. to make it to heaven? I say, no, they're evil. Mm -hmm. You know, you believe just in the Torah. Sure, well, if you sure. talk to your Christian friends and say, mm -hmm. do you, you, do I have to believe in the Torah and the Quran to go to heaven? Mm -hmm. No, 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 just, just, just the Bible. Just well, the Bible. Yeah. Islam, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Alhamdulillah. Is a the religion we have to believe in all of them. You yes. believe in Jesus, peace be yes. upon you. Alhamdulillah. We love Jesus too. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you don't believe in Jesus. Oh, you, and again, most of their knowledge came from uh, from Google or uh, 
or the Fox Navy. News. Yeah, Fox News, where their friend yeah. tells you, like you said, you don't have to wear that. So a real religious thing, the hijab, you know. And, uh, and that was from another Muslim, Subhanallah, yeah. you know, who told me, oh, you don't have to wear hijab. Uh, and so, yeah. But I think it's one of those things that you just, you, you learn a little bit at a time. You know, the Quran wasn't revealed all in one night. You know, they uh, Certain parts were revealed and certain even prohibitions, like originally the prohibition against alcohol was not originally there. And then later it came later. So yeah. when people learned in increments, so sort of successive approximations. Yeah. And if you uh, have a thought, you want to be uh, revert to Islam, mm -hmm. doing what you're doing right yeah, now. Sure. If you're uh, wearing those uh, skirts that uh, mm -hmm. uh, a doll that a three-year-old could wear, probably <laughs> I'm saying, or if you're uh, smoking and or whatever, I'm not saying endorsing all that. Sure, of course not. You know, just keep doing your regular line, and just when you get down to and to pray, ask Allah to help you. Allah, I know what I'm doing isn't right. I I know I'm not dressed like my sister, uh, mm -hmm. and I don't think I could help me. And if you pray, He'll help you. If you're yes, yes. Heart, you know, Allah, I can't give up these cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Oh, Allah, help me to do it, you know. So don't mm -hmm. worry about what you're doing now. Just keep doing what you're doing. Like, say, that's not a very good Islamic theology, but we're dealing with a real world here, you know. Sure, sure. So Addictions are hard try to... Your, try your best, you know. Yes, and, try your like best. Say, I'm not saying keep doing those, but don't think that overnight you, like, turn the light switch on and off, that you have to all of a sudden you go from uh, Tom Smith to Sheik Smith, you know, or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you go from, like I say, uh, uh, dress appropriately as a woman to, you know, you have to wear the uh, the burqa or whatever, you know. Oh, yes. Yeah. So you're just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. May Allah bless those that do all that, but just do that, work yes. out yourself and try your best. That's all. Thankfully, Allah is not like man. Mm -hmm. And he, he just wants our best. He does. He does. Yes. Alhamdulillah. And, you know, he knows our hearts. He knows what we don't even know. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. So, yeah. So for those of you who are listening to this podcast, who are interested in Islam, you don't have to worry about those excuses that you keep telling yourself. You know, I can't become Muslim because I listen to music. I can't become Muslim because I smoke. I can't become Muslim because I have addictions and because I'm a sinner. When I become the most sinless, pure person with the purest heart, then maybe I can become Muslim. I mean, you might tell yourself these things, but no, God will accept you as, you know, as who you are. Alhamdulillah. So, and you will become a better person by... And somebody said the other day, they said, you got to listen to the voices talking to you. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, the one shaitan, if you hear something saying, oh, yeah, they're killers. Oh, you could never do that. Mm -hmm. uh, that sister, she's really holy. and uh, She has special qualities that you don't have. Or that man, you know, uh, or these people at the mosque, they were brought up like that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know who's telling you that? Oh, the shaitan. Yeah. Subhanallah. So there's something saying if you just just try it. Give yeah. it a try. I'll I'll help you. I'll give you the strength. I know you're not perfect and you're never gonna be. Mm -mm. But, but try. Well, you know who's telling us you gotta you have to distinguish between the two voices in your head. Sure, sure. We go back to Pink Floyd, but <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to quote Pink Floyd. We're not singing him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh uh just listen to the voice and try it. And you know, and, the, and that's like I tell people you if once you become a Muslim, it's not like you you don't want to go back. Mm -hmm. The only thing I regret about it, I thought, man, I, oh Allah, I wish I would have been like this my whole life. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's a beautiful thing. I, I wish I had taken my shahada sooner, but then I realized, you know, I took it when I needed to. Yeah. That and there's Allah's that cadre of Allah point. that, you know. So these new people that they were considering Islam don't think, well, you know, once you come in that Allah is going to, if you decide, well, I don't want to be a Muslim anymore, uh, mm -hmm. Allah is going to kill you or or the people from your area, mosque, are going to come over your house and burn it down. And no. Kill you. You quit. no. No, no, no. Subhanallah. Yeah, no, you wouldn't want, the only thing is you don't want to leave it. Yeah, the no. The thing is you don't, you just regret that you didn't do it sooner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, if, but you got to take just like in the getting in the water you got to take that first step you know that's right you got to take the first step. step you'll you'll be so happy 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I never heard anybody uh, um, saying, well, I became a Muslim, now I don't like it, and blah, blah, blah. I never heard anybody. That's a, it's like a standard testimony, you know, like you just said, or like mm-hmm. I just said, you know, I wish I'd done it sooner, you know? Yes, yes, I do. And uh, it has brought me so much more peace and a much closer relationship with God. Yeah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just that is what I had been praying for before I became Muslim. I wanted that closer relationship with God. So yeah, and you know, ta'ala. Yeah. the God, not mm-hmm. a God. Yes, and that's the another God. thing too about you. You think about the Christians are always bragging and you know how powerful God is. You know, He's big and awesome. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then the, there's a, tr- a trinity. Sure. And there's one devil. Why does it take three gods? handle yeah. one devil when God's supposed to be so tough. Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. And if God is the first and the last, how can he be the first and the last if he's three? Mm-hmm. Yes. Again, not making fun of anything Christianity, but when you really understand who you're praying to, you know? Sure, sure. You know, like if we understand who we're, we're, we're talking we're talking to, the God, not yes, a God. Yes, the God. The, the God. God. And is there anywhere in the Bible where Jesus specifically says to worship him? I mean, do you know of anywhere? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, no, but uh, Los Hanna Watala helped me to understand the Bible better. There is some uh, a, a verse, I believe it's in John chapter 14, mm-hmm. where, where they were talking, they were standing in the judgment day. Mm-hmm. And uh, they said, oh, uh, Father, we did many, many works and we fed the poor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we healed the sick. Mm-hmm. Uh, we raised the dead. We did many signs and miracles mm-hmm. in your name. Mm-hmm. And you think that God was like, all right, come on into heaven. Sure. But instead he says, depart from me. I never knew you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why could you do all those things? Why did he say depart from me? Yes. I so- never knew you because they never worshipped him as the true God. Allah, Allah's channel went to Adam. Mm-hmm. They worship him as part of God. Mm-hmm. But there's no place where Jesus, where uh, another verse, uh, it, he said, Jesus, teach us to pray. Sure. And all our Christian brothers and sisters know that. And again, I'm not making fun of the Bible. I love the Bible. I still sure, have yeah, yeah. I have uh, a Bible next to me. It's with my Quran. Yeah. But they, he said, when Jesus, they said to Jesus, peace be upon him, teach us to pray. He mm-hmm. said, our Father... Mm-hmm. which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Mm-hmm. Well, if Jesus would have been God, he would have said, okay, now are we ready? Yeah. Our Jesus, which is in heaven, hallowed be your name, Jesus. He didn't say hallowed be your name, Jesus. No, he didn't. He didn't say oh. that. And going back to the uh, uh, the seven books that are missing out of the mm-hmm. original mm-hmm. Bible. Sure. That right there blows the cover for the Bible because if you go to the last book of the Bible, the book of Mm -hmm. Revelation, Mm -hmm. Jesus said, uh, peace be upon him, he said, if any man takes one word Mm -hmm. or adds one word to this book, his name will be taken out of the book of life. Mm -hmm. Here's somebody, like I tell my cousin, I said, Dave, I don't argue with you, but where's those seven books? Yeah, yeah. And that's what I was saying. Yeah. Where's, these are seven books. But you're talking, mm-hmm. so, mm-hmm. I said, you find me where those seven books went. And uh, I'll come back to church. Sure, sure. Which is a good but point. And the, it's a good point. They've all been they've all been altered. And, and when I was younger, even as a Christian, that was one of my questions. Like, I never really asked it, but it made me wonder. Like, well, it says here you're not supposed to alter the word of God. And yet it has been altered all over the place. So what does that mean about what we have? Yeah. You know, and why was it altered? Yeah, people don't do things, you know, there's no behavior without a purpose. So why was it altered? I don't yeah, know. Like, and even like a prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, even he's in the uh, Bible, but they even took that out and changed it. Mm-hmm. Like in mm-hmm. Proverbs, stuff like that, it talks about the, our blessed prophet. Sure, uh, sure. Peace be upon him, but it was taken out of the Bible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're, talk, you're not talking like, okay, sister, you're going to make a cake today. And well, I'm going to add some extra flour in it. And then mess the cake up. You just go make it a, a different one. 
Sure, or take out the You're sugar. Talking about your soul. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is true. You're talking about our soul. Yeah, we're oh, going to speak in eternity. So just to like, so well, it doesn't matter. God knows or all everything, you know. Mm-hmm. And when, you know, and and you're really, you're not cheating uh, your, anybody but yourself if you don't try Islam. Sure. No, you're not. It, it's just, it is for your benefit, alhamdulillah. So it really is for your benefit and your guidance, and it helps you build a closer relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because yeah, you're not yeah. just, you're living Islam. It's, it's not just a, it's just not, a, not just a good idea. It's not just a beautiful idea. You're actually taking actions, and you're worshiping yeah. God, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, because you're, uh, you're, you're, like, religion isn't just part of your life on Easter Sunday or Christmas mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. Or on Sunday from ten to twelve. Sure, sure. But it's it's every it's it becomes a part of it's is your life. It is your life. Yes. Yeah. So you can think about you know try yeah. it, try, try it, it. And, try it. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, there are challenges in Islam. Yeah. There are challenges for all of us, but those challenges make us better and have a they give us an opportunity to have a closer relationship with the Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Yes, we all have. I mean, I'm sure if I, you could probably tell me some stories that happened, you know, and things are going through. And I could too, you know. I'm doing that. Yeah, yes. Things going on with my son and his mother and all that, you know, things. Oh, yeah. Things and, are uh, tough. But I think, and I got home and I was reading the Quran. And sometimes it's like, Los Hanna Watata, he, he gives you like, a, you go right to a certain uh, verse in mm-hmm. the uh, Quran. And I was mm-hmm. reading, I thought, what? He said, sure. uh, do you think they're going to, like I said, I paraphrase, I don't know the Arabic. Sure, said, sure, sure. They're going to get by without having any problems like the people before you did? Sure, like without being tested. Yes. Yeah. yeah, people without being tested. Cave. Prophet mm-hmm. Muhammad was mm-hmm. in the cave mm-hmm. and they cried out, when is Allah going to help us? Mm-hmm. And he says, Allah is near. Always. Uh, yes. Alhamdulillah. And then once uh, the ayat says, uh, after a time of trouble comes a time of ease. Sure, sure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, is our, our only protector and provider. Yes, yes. And it don't matter what you are. If you're a devil worshiper, mm-hmm. a trinity, or you worship mm-hmm. two, or if you're a Hindu and you worship like a thousand of them, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're still going to have problems in life. Yeah, so we're not going to have help? problems. It's, Any God you got to polish mm-hmm. and uh, take care of, you don't stand up. Or any God where it takes three of them to beat up one, you're not, you're not in good company. Mm-hmm. So, but with Los Hanna Watala, he has no partner. He, has, he doesn't need, he don't even need us. No, he doesn't <laughs> need us. Lie, we need lie, him. Allows us, yes. Yeah, <laughs> we need him so much. Yeah. So I think there's even a Bible verse I heard recently. It was something about, the children of Israel know you that God is one. Yes, Deuteronomy 6.4 says, Hear, hear O Israel, mm-hmm. the Lord our God is one. Is one. Yeah, not three. One. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so. uh, you'll never convince a Jewish person the Trinity. No. That's why they don't like Christianity, mm-hmm. because of the Trinity, even though you can't find the word Trinity in the Bible. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so, but. But yeah, they uh, hero Israel, Lord our God is one. And again, that's a good that that's a true verse. Mm-hmm. But before a new a Muslim would start dabbling in the Bible, you know, and studying and stuff, he might want to get, uh, inshallah, get more rooted in Islam first. You know. Yes, I think that is a good a good point. You know, learn more, read more Quran, learn more Quran because the Quran is consistent. Alhamdulillah, and that was my problem with this the uh, bible the inconsistency yeah i have pages of stuff wrote down because i sat down for weeks and wrote down alhamdulillah inshallah with like the you wouldn't believe like the 23rd psalm mm-hmm. the lord the lord is our, the lord shepherd. Is our shepherd yeah yeah and uh that's in the quran uh, mm-hmm. i'm the first and the last mm-hmm. the beginning and david and goliath mm-hmm. uh, Noah, mm-hmm. Noah. Sure. Uh, so we, we would call him in the church. Noah and uh, the Psalms where David 
Mm-hmm. Can, uh, woo David, mm-hmm. peace be upon him, said, uh, I will praise him, worship him in the early in the morning and at night. Man, <laughs> sometimes you think you're reading uh, the Bible verse after verse. I, I wrote down, and I thought, wow. And sometimes I like to go on these uh, websites to be, uh, I guess you'd say, kind of devious. <laughs> I'll say that being Devious. Subhanallah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. I'm just joking. You know, <laughs> I know. But, but I'll put like a, a, a verse in there that's in the, in the Quran. It's mm-hmm. the same verse. You, you know, like there's a verse in the Quran that says you are the first and the last beginning. Sure, and sure. The, and mm-hmm. I, I'll put it on, on that website. I'll say, now what verse is that in the Bible? Uh-huh. And what happens? Well, I wait for him to say, well, that, you know, and, but so, to say, well, oh, it's in such and such chapter, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, well, Hannah will tell it's in the Quran. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. And they wouldn't know that. They wouldn't know that no, at all. No, because you've already, it automatically, it's the book of uh, the bad book, you know, it's this and that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you if you listen to people, you you know, that's a shame. We, 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 most of us, we spend our whole life worrying what everybody else thinks. And most of the time, they're not even thinking about us. No, not at all. They're thinking about themselves. Yeah, with, 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 well, everybody's looking at me, you know, and they're like, who is that? No, nobody, nobody's looking at you. Yeah. You just... It's again, yeah. it's that story in your head. You're telling yeah. yourself what you think other people are thinking. But rea- the reality is you can't read anybody's mind, which is probably a good thing. Yeah. I would not yeah. want I would not want to be able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> or vice versa. Or vice versa. No, I want don't want anyone reading my mind either. <laughs> no, stuff for that. No, that would be terrible. <laughs> But uh, I mean, you're a psychologist. Maybe it would be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> yeah. But yes. So, was there any easy parts for you in becoming Muslim? You know, when I when I finally had that prayer, when I just said, "God, I don't care what anybody thinks." Mm-hmm. Uh, alhamdulillah, I, I told uh, when I was praying and lost to Allah. I said, "You know." I'm, you always hear about somebody on TV or something, you know, these evangelists, these people mm-hmm. that they, uh, have these miracles, you know, and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, they this super, dance, well, uh, you know, uh, uh, this happened to me and all. And uh, I looked at my bank account, I had a million dollars or something, you know, and all that. Stuff. You know, I sure, thought, sure. I never have nothing like that happen. But that day after that prayer, mm-hmm. I was handing what down. Sometimes I still go to the, table where I prayed at that day and I'll, I'll say I'll, I'll never forget that day because it just changed like that it's like mm-hmm. turned from like Los Hanawatana says in the Quran from uh, darkness to light like it yes. says in the Bible yes. too uh-huh. all my desire for to eating properly and mm-hmm. avoiding uh, worldly things you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know like listening and things watching you know mm-hmm. that, that just went away mm-hmm. yeah, I'm doing that so I forgot to ask you, when did you, when did you revert or convert? Or some people like to say renew. When did you renew your Islam? Because technically we're all born Muslims. So yeah, <laughs> I would have been in 2011. Oh, 2000. Yeah, 2011. 2011, alhamdulillah. Yes. Yeah. I was uh, December 5th, 2019. So I'm still pretty I, new. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's always a process, even you know, they have apprenticeship programs where you finish it mm-hmm. and in two or three years, whatever, and you're, uh, you're graduating. But in Islam, you're always in the apprenticeship program. Yeah, Once you learn to do this, there's still a hundred other new things you need to learn, you know? Yes, yes. But there's one masters that, mm-hmm. you know, even uh, our precious sheikhs, you know, like your Majid and mine. Sure, sure. I mean, the way they, they sit there and it just taught, you know, like, like sure, a computer, sure. and I think like sometimes I just like wow. Oh yeah. But he, he would tell you I'm learning. Sure, they would all say they're yeah. learning. Some many yeah. of the people you know, dear our dear listeners, are people who are considering becoming Muslim. Yeah. Or they may have just become Muslim, so they're just trying to learn more about yeah, Islam. They all say, God, am I am I really doing the right thing, or should I do this? And if you feel like something's missing in your life, mm-hmm. because lost hand will tell you know because you. You'll, you'll feel something in your heart, like like a uh, something's missing in your heart. Yes. 
Yes. By trying to put the uh, square peg in the round hole. Yes, exactly. So you you feel like something's just not right. Mm-hmm. So this is praying. You pray at the at the Catholic church, at the regular church, or in your living room. Sure. But if sure. you just be honest with uh, God, just talk to Him. Say, is this right path for me? Sure. And then your part comes when the ball is passed to you, and you you feel God talk to you and say, "Yes, that is right." Don't worry what people think or say. And mm-hmm. Just try it out. Then you have to yeah. act out. Don't ask God for something, and then don't do what He tells you to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Allah. Prayer is important for, I mean, yeah. as Christians, as Muslims, as people who are of the Jewish faith, everyone. I mean, prayer is important. It is our connection with God. And I think it's very important to, you know, to ask, to ask, you know, God subhanahu yeah. wa ta'ala, ask Allah, you know, what's the right decision for me? And he will guide you. Yes. So, and so, like say, I had when my... I did a lot of preaching in the churches and other churches around the state. You know, I had a lot of good experiences with God, you know. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Uh, yes. But uh, so you just got to just talk to God from your heart mm-hmm. and, he, and ask him to direct. You don't worry about what your parents think. <laughs> I heard say the other day, oh. one guy, found out his, his mother found out he became a, a sure. converted through YouTube. She's seen him on YouTube. Oh, my goodness. Really? But don't worry about any of that. It's your soul. It's your eternity. It's mm-hmm. your life. And mm-hmm. it's up to you. So worry about yourself and, and, and not anybody else. Yeah. No, I mean, you can't really, you know, Voltar, I like how he said it. He said, tend your own garden. Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. you know. Exactly. So if I don't know who Voltar is, he's a philosopher from France. And actually, he was, uh, if I recall, he was excommunicated by the Catholic Church. He did not oh. like his teachings <laughs> yeah. or his yeah. philosophy. So, but he has, you know, some good little quotes there, here and there. Yeah. So, can you like tell me about your first interactions with Muslims again? I mean, you kind of mentioned a little bit about that. Yeah, the, uh, the lady that I met, I used to notice that like when you'd always seen the, the uh, Muslim families, mm-hmm. uh, you like at the zoo or an mm-hmm. Audi, or something, they seem to always have their parents with them. Mm-hmm. And then I met one guy one time, and he said, "You know, my brother and I, mm-hmm. we got in a big argument, almost oh. a fight, sure, over sure. grandma." Uh, oh, really? Where she was going to stay, you know? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, like, oh, okay, I know that because that happened with my grandma, like my. My dad and my uncle were fighting because neither one of them wanted to stay wanted her to stay there with us, you know. Oh no. Opposite thing there. The brothers got in a big argument with each other because they wanted the grandma to stay with them. Yes, yes. They wanted the yeah. oh, wow, that's strange, you know. hmm hmm Sure, sure. And then when I began to talk to people, you know, I thought, oh, they're people just like us. Sure, yeah. Well, they they may dress different and conduct themselves but they're just this people you only all have their own personality and sure and uh yeah it was so that i have had a lot of good interaction that was a that was always a positive step mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And i never heard him saying like you know the you know the billy sunday you know the fire yes. and brimstone oh yes if you don't come a muslim you're gonna split hell wide open and yeah, uh, you're going to go straight there if you don't become Muslim right now. Yeah. You hear me? Just right uh, now. <laughs> yeah, you're going to die and go to hell tonight or something if you don't anything. Like yeah, that. yeah. I never said that, you know, using the pressure techniques or all. Sure, that the sort of fear. It's yeah. Like you're going straight to you know where. <laughs> I always said, hated that when I was a Christian. You know, it was like, yeah, you have to believe our way and our church and our doctrine or you're going straight to you know where. Yeah. It didn't make any sense to me because how can God be a loving God? How can God be a do, you know, the most loving? Yeah. And at the same time, send everyone to you know where. It doesn't make sense. If he loves us 70 times more than our mother, and I love my children a lot, I don't want my children to go to someplace like that. Yeah. Right? Exactly. So how do you, how do, that's my question. 
how do you reconcile that with with others? You know, when you're talking about Islam, how do you reconcile the idea that they have that oh, you know, God's going to send us to hell versus you know God is loving? Because uh-huh. that that was the hard part for me in the Bible. How do you reconcile those things? Or yeah, can you? exactly. You know, well, one thing I always found out that when you're trying to get people to come to church or give their life to, to the Lord or whatever, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. But, uh, the first thing you got to do, you got to build a bridge with them. You got to be become their friend before you become their pastor. Mm. That's how the Muslim uh, Muslim people do. They, I had that's how they did with me. You know, they mm-hmm. they visit with me, and uh, we went out for lunch together, and sure, went over sure. to the house for some stuff. You know, and now one time they say, you know, we well, are you ready to do the shahadas? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. they go to hell. Whatever one time might like, pressure you or something. Sure, In fact, sure. I, think I finally asked uh, Brother Zachy. I think I finally asked him, uh, you know, I, how do I do this? And then mm-hmm. he showed us, are you ready to do it? He said, I said, yeah, yeah. So I did it. No, and, but uh, they didn't, no pressure techniques. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Yeah, I feel like there was no pressure with, with me either. I had, and, and dear listeners, this is important for you too. You, you go out and you read the Quran and you read about Islam and you learn about Islam so that when you are ready to take that Shahada, you know that you really believe and you know that you're doing it with a clear, sound mind, with a steadfast heart. Because um, a lot of times in growing up in Christianity, it was you have to just believe. You have to take that leap of faith without the evidence. But in Islam, what I love is we can look at that evidence and we can be led by logic. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Mm-hmm. From my they experience, call, you know. <laughs> yeah, they call that, you know, uh, you know, faith is not being able to see what sure. you're talking about. But you, you could have a, a basic understanding. Like I say, you're talking to somebody and telling them there's the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. But you can't, nobody can show you that. Mm-mm. And nobody can show you where Jesus prayed to himself. Mm-hmm. But what I can show you where those seven books, the Bible, are missing. No, no, no one can. And so, uh, nobody can show you why they took the uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, out of the, of the Bible. Nobody can, you know, even if they could explain even a couple things, you know. Sure, yeah, that would be nice. You have a, you have a right to know. Sure. I mean, being. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And thank, thankfully, alhamdulillah, that they, uh, like we were talking about, you know, people don't pressure you. Nobody yes. likes something like going in to like the furniture store, you know, like mm-hmm. these art band or something. Sure, furniture. sure. And you go in and the first thing a salesman comes up, hey, what can I help you with? You know, sure, I'm, yeah. I'm just looking around, you know, because I don't even like that in the furniture store, you know. Yeah, sure. But look, what about let alone your soul? I know, or not the timeshare hard sell. Boy, they will not leave you alone. Those oh, timeshares. Yeah. Oh my goodness. No, you only have to listen to the presentation for an hour and three hours later, they're oh, still grilling you like you're in some sort yeah, of interrogation. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm not interested. Please let me go. It's been over an hour. Yeah, you almost feel like an interrogation instead of a it time. It is, it is. It's like an interrogation. They could just get out the light and just, you know, yeah. dispense with the niceties. I guess you at least you get some food. But yeah. <laughs> and free Disney tickets or something. Yeah, you know, you get a but they, uh, yeah, they won't feel that pressure. Thank God, alhamdulillah, yeah. Alhamdulillah, yeah, I think that's important because, I mean, the sincerity, I think, is important. Dear listeners, it's the sincerity of, of knowing that you are doing the right thing, that you are building a closer relationship with God. What kind of, like for someone who's just become interested in Islam, what would you recommend them to do research-wise? I would. Like, what did you uh, do? Well, I, you know, try to, uh, I, I like to watch a lot of YouTube uh, mm-hmm. programs, you know, something I'm interested in, like Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you know, like type, like a lot of research. Sure, sure. And I'll try a few mosques out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you have a question that comes to your mind, uh, like if you're like me, I forget by the time I even, the thought comes sometimes, I just write sure, it down. Sure, sure, write it down. Why do you do this? Why do you do that? Do I got to do this? Mm-hmm. And uh, find some place that give you a Quran. I tell you another a, a really cool guy I love listening to is a uh, Sheikh uh, Yusuf. S- yes, yes. I know him actually. Alhamdulillah, I met him on Friday. 
Oh, you did? I did. He came to our masjid and... Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't think about it. He was, I had it on the Facebook. I love him. Sure, yeah. He had it on the Guidus TV. Yeah. I'm on there asking a question. Oh, I have to watch <laughs> I asked that. the very first question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have to watch that because he, he's another one, our, uh, revert to Islam. Sure is. So watch stuff like that, you know, uh, and, and find somebody that... Uh, uh, like that has Qurans, you know. Somebody, I mean, I, I mean, I hope a million people would, would send a, a text or something. But if you don't have a Quran, lost Hanuma Tal, inshallah, I'll help you get one. You know. Oh yes, yes, it's uh, so true. It's so true. Like my very know, first. Just read it. Yeah, just sure. In it. in English, and there's apps now. There's even apps yeah. of the Quran that you can get on your phone so you can read yeah. it. That's how I read the Quran the first time because I didn't have a physical copy. And the Hadith. And the Hadith. The I, th- I think so, yeah. yes. Yes. But that's what I was just saying, buddy. Learn, learn, learn. Mm-hmm. You know, study. Read. Something comes to your mind, you know, uh, and, and try to develop a, a, a friendship or find somebody maybe that knows about Islam. Maybe somebody yes. from Islam. Somebody that yes. can mentor you and steer you in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That at a you know, go to a local mosque, and you mm-hmm. don't have the listeners. You when you go in there, you don't have to uh, even get down and pray. Just get your chair. I've seen people just get a chair, sit in the back, and watch sure, you know, sure. how they do it and how they pray. And and uh, mm-hmm. alhamdulillah, if you go to a mosque in America, most of them, the sheikh will talk in Arabic, and then he'll say it in English. And do that, yes, he will speak in English yeah. too because most of the people, their mother tongue is not going to be Arabic. Yeah. It's going to be English. So they kind of put the Arabic in with the English, alhamdulillah, which is good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As long as we don't have to do it because I, I, thought, I don't know how you can get switched <laughs> like that. Like in uh, Detroit, they, I belong to a friend of the Yemeni mosque mm-hmm. and they have one complete service for Arabic and they have another service for English. So wow. go to the mosque. Don't just jump into it. Sure, you know, sure. You know, even in the Bible, it talks about uh, the four types of soil. Mm-hmm. Yes, I remember the parable of the soil. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, you're you're better off just uh, studying, asking questions. T- take your time. And again, you don't want to be 10 years from now, you know. Well, I'm studying. I'm thinking, you know, I mean, there's a fine line there, you know. Sure, you're sure. Waiting too long and then not waiting long. But but take your time. And if, and if you ask questions and if somebody don't know the answer find somebody that does and sure. try to find a local mosque near you and yes and, uh, and, and go there and just feel comfortable and they're not going to all jump on you with a start hitting you in the head with the quran and tell you do this no, oh no do this oh, no do this. we'll do oh, that goodness you got to say the shahada or you're, you can't leave you know we you love our quran. quran why would you and we love the people no yeah. i just this is so wrong in so many ways I just, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I they won't like, do that. No mosque will do that. But I'm just saying. Yes, I know. You know, just let you, they're, you're going to go in there. They're going to say, uh, uh, they may say hello, or they may say assalamu alaikum, which means they're yeah. saying like, peace be unto you. Or yes, they yes, they're going to say peace to you, and you won't know what to say back. You know, yeah. don't hear. feel uncomfortable. You don't ask, ask them a question. You know, <laughs> and just like we were talking about earlier, no, they're not going to pressure you to doing stuff. So that's what I would say for the news Muslim. Just you've got to study, you've got to learn. If you don't know about anything, that's how you're gonna sure do by, get by going. 